Welcome to another episode of Six Life Questions. I'm your host, Corey Gregg. Today, we got Coach Dustin Myers, longtime homie, friend, business partner, all the above. Long time. Long, long time. time. Like the longest time. All right, D, so I'm really intrigued by hearing your answers on these questions. Mm -hmm. And some of these might be what your answer is right now. The answer mm -hmm. could be different as you get older, and they might have been different when you were younger. So we'll bat them back and forth, but I'm, I'm excited here. So number one, what is one ritual you are dedicated to? I mean, this is the obvious answer, but it's training every day. And I think it's kind of changed a little bit as I've gotten older. You know, it used to be I needed to lift weights every day. Yep. It's become more about conditioning. I have to do some form of conditioning every day. Now, you I love still, putting yourself in a hurt. I know that. <laughs> there, there's just something about it. There's a real clarity that comes. It's, it's almost more the mental side of it than the physical side of it for me. Is that putting myself in some type of uncomfortable spot uh, for a somewhat extended period of time. Yep. And if I don't do that every day, like I don't feel as clear headed. And I feel the same way about on heavy weights. I yeah, feel you like, almost have to go heavy every I day. I feel like I need to lift something heavy to yep. test myself in the same manner. And then after that, I get, whether I make it or don't make it, mm -hmm. I just know, I think I gave it literally max effort, which sounds so cliche right now, but, right. That, but that's, <laughs> but I think that's where it's the same kind of thing. And every time I see you do those type of workouts, I know it's the, it's the similar parallel. Yeah. And it's not like I have to, um, you know, set a PR every day. Yeah. I don't have to run my fastest mile every day, but maybe if it's not, I'm running fast and maybe I got to be on that bike for 40 minutes for 50 minutes, whatever it is. Um, and it, it's, it's been like that for a while now. Now, I, I still get the urge to get a pump mm -hmm. and to lift some chase heavy weights. Pump. Yeah, I, I still want to chase a pump and I still want to lift, you know, three, three or four days a week or whatever. But I feel like every day I have to do something kind of conditioning based. Most recently, obviously, because I see you all the time, it's mm -hmm. like the sauna and the ice baths uh, with the ice barrel has became very ritual for you. But is it daily? No, it's usually like twice a week. So this okay. morning, you know, it's always Wednesday mornings. And it's always Sunday evening and then maybe one other day here or there. Yeah. But that's um, been consistent for a while. Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely for like about the past, I don't know if I'd say the past year, definitely since I've had my, uh, my barrel sawn at my house. Mm -hmm. So since April, yeah, I don't think I've missed like a two day a week thing since April. So last quick point on the conditioning mm -hmm. or lifting or whatever, is it been, is there no off days anymore for Dustin Myers? Oh no, no off days. On yeah. That. Yeah. So even like today, the sauna and the ice kind of took the spot of that conditioning. Okay. So I might lift later, but I probably won't condition because I already did, you know, my heart rate was up in the sauna and I kind of, that kind of checked that box for me. Yep. And even like my quote unquote easy day, like my off day might be, well, let's see if I saw an ice again on Sunday. So Saturday might be my off day. <laughs> yeah. That might be the day I just run five miles <laughs> and like not push the pace, but just, yeah. I need to go out. I need to breathe cold air. I need to sweat. And yeah. um, that's kind of my off day. Yeah. So no off days. No. All right. Number two, what is one thing, and it seems like it's morphed into like two or three because it's hard mm -hmm. for people to answer, that you're super proud of? That when you tell somebody, you know, like you can't stand, it's going to be beaming from you because you're just that proud of whatever it might be. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really proud that me and my wife have been together for so long. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's been, and I talked about that a lot this week because we were around some people that we didn't know that, you know, were meeting us for the first time or whatever. But, you know, we've been married and I don't even know, maybe 15 years or however mm -hmm. long it's been, but we've been together for, this will be 25 years. Yeah. You know, so we met when we were 18, you know, so l way longer now than half our life. So that's, that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of. That's cool. What about professionally? Uh, professionally, man, you know, it's, it's really hard to pinpoint on one. I think probably, you know, it'd be easy to say, you know, winning the national title with Ohio State. Yeah. You know, obviously that's, if you look at like accolades, that's the one I'm most proud of. But I think doesn't mean that's the one that means the most, though. The one that means the most is the fact that owning a gym and getting to do things on my own terms every day. Yep. So the fact that you and I started out as lifting partners before we could drive cars. <laughs> yeah. And then Facts. my entire professional career has been spent as a business partner with you owning a gym. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I've never really done anything else. I mean, I've had other side projects here and there, but the fact as that, have we both. But correct. You know, but I think it's all been rooted in the gym. And the fact that we have been gym owners this long and we've got to do things our own way, you know, in our own style, we get to listen to Wu-Tang, we get to lift heavy, dirty weights. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of people that can say they've got this to live their entire professional career on their own terms. And that's, that's something I'm really proud of. Yeah. So that, and that's the real root of that question that when you explain that in a roundabout way to somebody you don't know, like mm -hmm. that you couldn't hide that 
this is what you know this is what you do this is what you're proud about that it's been this period of time and that it's that deep down who you are well, I think too, when you look at it, you look at all the different business ventures, you think of like, you know, my training business has been very successful. My eBooks have done really well internationally, all these different things. The gym itself is the lowest moneymaker by far <laughs> yeah. out of all, but that's the one I'm most proud of because it's really not about whether the gym makes money or loses money. Yeah, It's about, you know, getting to live the life that you want to live. Well, I think even when we first set it up, we were like, the gym just has to be able to pay the bills so we can train and make money. Yeah. It was always set up as the backdrop day, well, but, yeah. the, but rooted it. Because remember, when the gym became a thing, that was probably what we thought was the end goal. Ever. Right, right. The original because they even gym. like think that it was possible. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It, it's it, there's so much other stuff going around it, but just achieving that we have a gym yeah. felt like La La Land to us. Yeah, it almost felt like unbelievable. Like pinch, <laughs> pinch me, I'm dreaming. I have my own gym. You know. Correct. Yeah, and I, I think there probably was opportunities, you know, at different times where we could have changed the way the gym was run or the things we did with the gym or brought other people in that may have made it more successful from a, a dollar standpoint, um, but it would never really appeal to us to change it. All right. Uh, number three, mm -hmm. what's one thing you wish you could change? We talking personally, professionally? It's up to you or both. You know, this sounds really bad, but I would have liked to have been six foot tall. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, there ain't no wrong with that D. I was, and, and I was not, waiting for somebody. No, you know what? I'm just being honest. Not, and I'm not talking about for sports. Yeah, you know, I don't even care about it for that. I just think it would have been nice to be six foot tall. Yeah, I'm five eight. You know, and it's, it it doesn't bother me. Yeah, it doesn't really affect my day to day. But man, it would it would have been nice to be taller than average. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then you're, I think, but I, that's an honest answer. Yeah, which is what I wanted. That's perfect. I wanted to be six four. I wanted to experience. That's Dude, so funny. Five eleven. I'd have been happy with that. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. What about um, uh, anything professionally? Anything athletically? Oh man, athletically. Yeah, I definitely think. Well, kind of two parts. I wish I would have started wrestling at a younger age. I didn't start till tenth grade. I mean, I kind of tried it a little bit in eighth grade, and then you know, got hurt or whatever. But I really didn't start till tenth grade. So that's one thing. The second thing is, I wish that. I had the type of work ethic and understanding of how to work hard and be uncomfortable that I have now. I wish I would have had that then. Mm. You know, people, I mean, I knew how to lift hard, I guess, but I guess people would never listen to me talk or see me coach and think like, oh, I bet he was, you know, lazy in the high school wrestling room, but I really was. And I can remember- That's just an honest thing to say too, D. Yeah, it's almost kind of like, it, it kind of blows my mind when I really think back to, I was like the kid, and I, I think most kids, are like this and definitely were like this on our team except for maybe luke and a couple others like if the coach's back was turned we would slow down or we would yeah. slack you know and i i just wish that i really understood the value of hard work i think it was because at that point in my life i associated hard work with a burden you know like when i would have to mow the grass or like shovel out the barn and stuff like that i hated it yeah i didn't really understand the big picture of how it was helping me for later in life so I looked at every, everything like that as like punishment. So mm -hmm. then when I had to work hard for sports, I didn't want to do it because mm -hmm. I was like, this is punishment. I think that's really good perspective. And yeah. it's hard for you because you, you push yourself so hard now. It's hard for you to even conceptualize that you thought that way. Dude, my last... <laughs> it like blows your mind, doesn't it? it? <laughs> yeah, it totally blows. It makes me really realize how we change and evolve as a person. Oh, yeah. You know, so we can't like base... Like your entire personality is not going to be based on who you were in high school. You know, no. you really change a lot. But I can still remember being in St. John's Arena district tournament my senior year and losing my last match and setting off to the edge of the mat and crying because I wasn't going to make it to state. And but then the the thing that like snapped me out of it, I thought, and this is hilarious too, considering what I do now. I thought I'll never have to run sprints again in my life. <laughs> like wrestling's over, I'll never have to run again. Now I can just lift weights. I told Randy when I quit the coal mine, I'm never getting up at 5 a.m. the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. That, that was the first thing. And then I remember going home when he was still working in the mine and I was uplifting before he was going to work. And he was just laughing his ass off. He was like, you heard what you told me when you left? It's just, it's just funny how we do change. Well, I think you, you did that, you know, waking up that early because you had to, but you looked at it as punishment. It was just like yeah. the way for you to get to your end goal and getting out of the valley. Yeah, yeah. Who would ever realize it would become a central part of who you are as a man not it's getting me. up really early 
My mom used to have to spray me in the face with a water bottle, wake me up for school. That's why AG when he when he don't want to get up, like I I kind of feel for him, but then I'm supposed to teach him different, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's like it's it's very funny actually. Uh, all right, number four, how did you build your initial confidence, and then how do you continue to build confidence, D? Man, you know, I think it, two things. Number one, I can always remember from an early age, my mom was always just giving us compliments. Yeah. She was always, I mean, she had me convinced I was She's the most- She's gassing you up. She was gassing me up. <laughs> she had me convinced that I was the most handsome boy on the planet, <laughs> That's you know? So, good. <laughs> so, they, so I think there was part of that. So I think it is important to instill confidence in your kids. Yeah. To always tell them they're doing a good job, to always tell them how beautiful they are, to tell them how good they are at singing, even when they can't sing. Yeah. You have to, you know, I, I guess you don't want to give them false hope, but at the same time, like, you just want to build that, to give them that general belief in themselves. So that was the first thing. I think your parents believing in you is a huge key. Huge too. thing, for like, sure. I, yeah, th you don't want to give them a false hope that they're going to go be Frank Sinatra, but also like you believing in them and them knowing that you believe in them, I think it goes so, it's huge. Well, I think the flip side, when you're young and your parents are such a, a central figure in your life, I mean, they really are like the sun and you're the planets that kind of orbit around it they're the center of your universe. And if there's doubt at that center, how are you not going to have self doubt yourself? Sure. You know, and kids can feel that. So I think, you know, your, your parents believe in you is huge. So I think definitely, you know, shout out to Yvonne. Yeah. She instilled in me, you know, from really early age that I could do anything and that I was so handsome and so sweet and blah, so blah, blah. Good. Uh, so that was the first thing, but I, there was also parts of me that weren't confident because I wasn't very naturally athletic. I was small um, you know, I was abnormally small. Like I was yeah. the smallest kid in my grade every year. I wasn't very strong. I wasn't fast. Uh, so, you know, as a, as a, as a young boy and you see like, you know, on the playground, you know, all these other kids are faster than you, stronger than you, you're getting picked on a little bit. So in that way, I wasn't very confident. So then where I really gained true confidence was in the weight room. You know, I started, you know, lifting weights with my dad when I was 12 and part of it was probably just because I was like so skinny, but I immediately saw results. I went from like just being like a little like scrawny kid that had like lats and abs at 12 years old mm -hmm. and people noticed it. And I went from like, all right, I'm benching the bar to now I'm benching a hundred pounds very quick. Like I was confident, almost, probably almost too confident in myself. Mm -hmm. Cause then I can remember like it flipped on you. It flipped on me. And then I remember being 13 and 14. I thought I was so tough, you know, because I could bench whatever. Yeah, yeah. And really I wasn't, I wasn't tough at all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that I, I like how you led us down that path is really good. D. Yeah. Uh, number five, what success mean to you? Man, I, I, I think success, ultimate success, and I'm going to tie it back to what we talked about at the gym, means getting to live your life on your own terms. And usually the pathway that most people get to do that is through making enough money. Mm. Um, but I think that gets, they get lost you know, on their way to get there because they forget about what they want their terms of their life to be. You know, For myself, I want to be able to spend time with my family. I want to be able to you know, be able to lift, lift weights every day and train every day in, in this type of environment. And, um, you know, have the type of things at my house, you know, not so much from a material standpoint, but from like, a the type of life that I want to live. I want to be able to get up and do the sauna on Wednesday mornings. I want to, you know, be able to chop wood in my backyard and have some land and things like that. So I think that's what ultimate success really boils down to. You know, we're really, even if we live a long life, we're really here for a short amount of time <laughs> and it starts to fly by. So I think if you get to, you know, if you get to your later years and even if you've had a lot of financial success, but if you don't feel like you got to live life on your own terms and experience the, the type of life that you wanted, then you probably don't feel like you were successful. Yeah. Great answer. Uh, number six and final question mm -hmm. of six life questions. Uh, one piece of advice you'd leave everyone. Oh man. One piece of advice. So you got one thing to write on a piece of paper. You can leave it to whether it's me, it's your kids, it's, it's anybody that's going to, they're going to say, and, th and th this is a hard question because there might be multiple pieces, but if it's like one thing, you know, overarching that you've learned from life or mm -hmm. went through that you could, that you could leave that people could benefit from. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to borrow this my, from my guy, Freddie Abdallah. He told me this a long time ago. He said, always be true to yourself. And I remember he told it to me. It was maybe, you know, cause he used to come down and lift weights with my yep, dad in the summertime. And it was one year when I was back from college you know, college, very transformative time. You start getting pulled in all these different directions. And I, w I was telling him some crazy story about, yeah. you know, something that happened on high street or whatever. And I remember he just said, Dust, he said, always be true to yourself. He said, remember where you came from, remember who you are 
and remember who you want to be. And I, I think it's just a really powerful thing because, you know, we get caught up in who we think people think that we are or who people want us to be or who we, we think society says we need to be. We really need to be true to who we are as a person. And, you know, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it might be viewed negatively by other people, mm -hmm. but we got to be true to ourselves. Because if, if at the end of the day, if you can't look yourself in the mirror and say, this is really who I am, then you're probably in a little bit of trouble. Freddie Abdella. Yeah, man. And probably just said it in the gym when you guys were working out. Like it was like obviously a hard hitting thing, but probably didn't know that. 20 years ago, you'd still be thinking about it or talking about it. No, he, he didn't say it like it was any type of profound thing. That's I think what I'm it, saying. Yeah, it just probably just came to him. And uh, no, but uh, thanks for that, Fred, because I've, I've definitely held that in my back pocket for a long time. Yeah, it's cool. Well, Dustin, it was awesome having, on, having you on here. This was Six Life Questions. I'm your, I'm your boy, Corey G, and that is Dustin Myers. We're out.